Hello and welcome to the First Issue Club podcast. We are your weekly reading book, comic book club, where we read comic books each and every week. We read first issues only. That's what we do here. We are reading a couple of books today, but in the club today, we don't have Mike D. This is the first for like however many episodes. It's his birthday, so he's groundhogging it. I think it's a, a twice a year event. Once on his wedding anniversary, he gets a day off. And once on his birthday, he gets a day off. And that makes it. it difficult for us because the studio is in his house. This is bringing back flashbacks to when we started COVID and we had to Zoom together and all the yeah. shit, the microphone shit. But now we're here. PTSD here. <laughs> uh, we got Greg, we got Budget King. We got two books that we're covering this week. Back to the double two format. We got Monkey Prince on DC. And Until My Knuckles Bleed on Behemoth Publishers. Uh, so we got two, two fine-ass comic books to talk about. Two, two first issues uh, that I'm pumped to talk about. But before that, we got a bunch of news. We got a bunch of shit. This is a jam-packed episode. This is the uh, meal that you ordered where they dumped a bunch of fries into your bag. And then mm-hmm. you got a bunch of extra fries. And you're like, oh, damn, that's, that's good. I'm having a good day. I believe that this episode will lead you to that result. Yeah, if anything, this episode should be dubbed the bag fry episode where he has got so much extra stuff for you guys. And probably for a good reason, Budget King, I don't know if you know this or not. This is our 250th episode. That's legacy numbering, too, yeah. Greg. If if that was um if we were on Marvel, we'd be getting our own number one right now. Oh yeah, yeah. They'd be we'd be getting no pay raise and more books. Yep. And we'd have like 15 variant covers, all done by famous world class artists. I can't wait to see me drawn by Peach Momoko. I think it'll be great. Here's what the thing is. is You hear 250 and you hear like, oh, that's a legacy act. That's an act. That's a that's a thing I don't need to get into. That's the wheel of time. Why would I spend so much time reading that or consuming that? The thing is, we're kind of bullshitters. And you could just pick up on this episode or the next episode. You don't have to listen to one single other episode. This Just start this friendship right now. It begins yep. today at 2.50. Yep. You, you could uh, listen to our companion podcast called First Issue Companion. And uh, <laughs> it details our back histories, uh, funny quotes we've all said, characters that have come and gone. Um so if you want to do some catching up, just find that episode out there. We've done You're some crazy. Go. <laughs> yeah, I love. We've done some crazy uh, stuff with like numbering, like episode hundred and mm-hmm. uh, all like Halloween episodes. We we're we're gonna do something crazy, but I think we're gonna save it because we're big Frank Miller heads for three hundred. Oh yeah, this is podcast. <laughs> 250 though that's a number that's a bunch of times around the sun so i'm pumped about that i think Uh, 250 is crazy like we've amassed quite a bit of new friends and we've covered a lot of cool comic books so uh, i think first and foremost thanks everybody for listening uh you know as long as you're still there we're we will still be here (laughs) and uh we'll keep the light on for you exactly yeah we would not be here without all of the ears and there's a lot of other stuff that uh we do we do a patreon so make sure to check that out Mm-hmm. We're on we're on social like a motherfucker like everybody is who's not on social. Do you ever hear people podcasts say like listen to wherever you get podcasts? Yes, and That's- then they're just like we don't have Twitter, we don't have Instagram. It's like how do you even <laughs> get the word out about your podcast? Oh, that's right, you're famous. Exactly, you don't need it. Um, and we have a sponsor. We are sponsored by Boulevard Brewing Company and the Space Camper IPA, uh, which you should. Add. That's the only beer you should order. I saw it yesterday. Uh, in the hands of a, a nice family. Every every family member had mm-hmm. one. Yeah. Uh, all of Including age. The dog. Yeah, the dog at a, at a restaurant. They were temporarily unmasked while they were drinking their beer yeah. and then put it back on. They were very COVID safe and they enjoyed themselves. I asked them afterwards. I bet they were all smiling while they are drinking their Space Camper IPA. Totally. We got Planet Comic Con coming up. They're going to be a big sponsor. We'll, be, we'll yep. be there with them. So if you're in Kansas City, we're hosting a panel out there we're actually hosting the first ever podcast meetup for planet comic-con so if you're in the kansas city area and you have a podcast or you want to start a podcast meet us there uh saturday at 11 30 we're out there 
um, to show you guys how to make a fun and interesting podcast and introduce you to some podcasts in the area. And we're going to slap some consensual asses. Yes, respectfully. Yeah, respect. if you want your ass slapped, we'll slap it there. <laughs> Sign the release form and you're good to go. Yeah, just get in line. And then um, one, more, one more thing before we get into the news. Um, if you're in the Kansas City area, March 6th, we are co-hosting an event with three other Kansas City podcasts, Debates on Tap, Who the Hell is This For, and Nightmare Junkhead. We are um, co-hosting a virtual Mario Golf event to benefit the local Kansas City Hope House. Um, it's a great charity event to benefit a great organization. Um, Boulevard has really ponied up here and is giving a raffle away for free beer for a year, which is insane. And we will be giving away a PlayStation 4 um, and many, many other prizes to be given away. So if you're in the area, come on down. Uh, March 6th at Cinderblock Brewing Company. We'll have that poster all over our social media. So don't worry about uh, writing it down now in the car. Be safe. Just go check our socials. I just want to give a quick shout out um, that we'll be doing that on March 6th. Oh, yeah. All right. What do we got for the news? That was a lot of like that was, a, news. that was a news hit. Let's start <laughs> with one that's that just dropped today. Um, Joel Jones is being, uh, I guess, uh, called out for maybe tracing some LaRaz pins for X-Men uh, to for her uh wonder woman book and i so i saw i saw the images you know side by side and they're kind of like i don't know they're definitely similar i would say they're more inspired by than like ripped off i mean it's just like some character poses that are kind of in the same positioning i think people are kind of over exaggerating a little bit but obviously when this stuff happens you kind of need to call it out and to make sure no one's ripping off somebody else but um that's the new hubbub that's going around the Twitter sphere. Greg, you're an artist. I, yeah. I've, I've dabbled. When I draw something, I have to have reference to it. Thank you. Yes, that's what it is. <laughs> I'm not saying this is what's happening. I'm just saying, like, I have to, like, be like, what, it, what exactly is a tricep look like? And, like, mm-hmm. or whatever. And then they just got carried away. Is that what happened here? <laughs> Maybe. Or they just, like, liked the pose and it's like, you know what? This will fit my drawing. So I want to reference this and it makes it sound like the, the whole page, like front to back is just like lifted from an X-Men comic to this Wonder Woman comic. And it's not really the case at all. So it's a little bit clickbaity article that's happening here. Maybe it was an homage. (laughs) Not even that because it's not even in reference to anything. A secret homage. Uh, yeah, one of those secret. It's so secret, no one knows about it. Yeah, that's every time I copy somebody publicly, I just say that was a secret homage. Yeah, didn't you know? <laughs> yeah, I was. That's I never got caught writing my parents' signature to get out of school. I was doing yeah, an homage. I was homaging them. <laughs> yeah. You can't ground me for honoring you. Yeah, I just did it on this exact line, this piece of paper. But I love you. Yeah, I, uh, imitation is the highest form of flattery. <laughs> All right, what do we got? Uh, I like this next one. Um, so a friend of the show uh, it recently announced on their Twitter, um, David Pepos announced that he's going to be the new writer for Savage Avengers. Nice. Previously, it was, I think, Gary Duggan or Jerry Duggan who was doing it. But in any case, uh, David has done Scout's Honor and Get Him to the Chapel, Lock and Ke- uh, Spencer and Locke. So he's been like, really in the trenches with the indie comics and he finally got the call he get his phone rang it was cv he was like i need you i need you for savage avengers get out of the trenches does, of the C- does cb like, only do uh landlines when he makes that call you have to yeah because yeah, then if if you don't um you know people not, in the, you, you the can't industry hang up because you can't you can't hang up and be like god damn i work for marvel <laughs> no it can't be dramatic <laughs> no exactly so yeah. it's all about performance for CV, and it's if it's, <laughs> it's a landline or nothing. Uh, that's awesome. I think Savage Avengers is a fun book, uh, so I think that'll be great. Yeah, and like the the lineup for the new Savage Avengers is pretty cool. Uh, Weapon H is in there, which is like the cross between Hulk and Wolverine, and you have like uh, Toxic and um, uh, Electra as Daredevils on the team as well. So it's just a lot of cool new people on the Avengers. So. Um, 
savage man for that <laughs> all right what are we what's the next one that we got did you see that there's a new justice league book coming out by daniel warren johnson and it's called jurassic league and it's just the justice league is dinosaurs okay that's pretty badass so i mean they're just dispensing marijuana now at DC. <laughs> <laughs> and they're just like whatever you can think of we'll do it we'll just do more it. batman more batman <laughs> yeah but how can we make Batman fresh? Oh, we'll make him a T-Rex. Nailed it. Yeah. I mean, I have to say this is exactly what I want, though, out of DC. To just be like, yeah, yeah we're a joke. <laughs> a- <laughs> <laughs> We've done everything else. Why not? You know, uh, now I'm wondering when Marvel's going to do it. Jurassic shit? Yeah. I will, they, yeah. If it's a good idea, they won't be above the homage. No, exactly. This will take this. Will, no, that'll be a ripoff. It won't even be an, an homage. <laughs> hey, it's always an homage if you call it first. If you say it before Twitter calls you out, it's an yep. homage. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> All right, I just wanted to record a little bit of an addendum here. We're about to talk about the Diamond 2021 sales sheet. And we, like some other people, in the world uh, forgot that Diamond dropped Marvel halfway through this year and didn't have DC at all. So their list was a little bit misleading. So uh, what you're about to hear is us having a hot take, like I'm assuming Diamond wanted us to have, but uh, we came across as a little bit of uh, uninformed noobs. So I apologize for that and uh, let the news segment resolve. Uh, did you see that Diamond released their uh, best um, selling comics of uh, 2021? No. Oh, yeah. Do you have any big, top hits to tell me? Big old list. Uh, num- like one through five is just, uh, you could probably call it, but it, it also was like kind of odd. So I'll just tell you it. You yeah. wanna, we, I, and I want to cover past five in uh, the Patreon. If you're cool with that. Yeah. 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 Okay. You know what number one is? You want me to top book of twenty twenty one is has got to be a Batman book. <laughs> it, it didn't make the uh, the top at all. It's kind of crazy. So okay, I'll just tell you it. It's here's the thing. It's mm-hmm. four of the five are number ones, which means we're in the right business, baby. Mm-hmm. Number one news. <laughs> number one is King Spawn. Oh, that makes sense. Because they did all this. Unfortunately, think, that makes sense. Yeah, I'm. You're also gonna writ- witness here that most of these are um, multiple cover scenarios, except for this one, House of Slaughter. Number one is number two. Oh, interesting. Then we got Gunslinger Spawn. Then, and this one's on one I'm not a fan of. Berserker number one. Boo. And then Venom 35. But look at that. Image, boom, image, boom, then Marvel. That's crazy. Yeah. And that I think House of Slaughter is basically piggybacking off of someone is killing the children hype. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, there's no, there's nothing yeah. to be uh Because no one there. wants to be left out of that party. Yeah. So uh, DC did not crack the top 10, um, but uh, there it is. Therein That's for lies. the whole year? This is 2021's comic books. Yeah, so it, it yeah. It's what That's they, insane. What, what do they ship? crazy. Oh, you know why? <laughs> you know why DC isn't on the list is they don't ship DC. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you, we have to cancel but you, the show. The but, you know, but you know what? I wasn't wrong. <laughs> They're not on the list. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. That's Diamond just uh, showing what they sold, and they That's mostly funny. sold image books. So <laughs> there they did it. <laughs> Busted. <laughs> okay, uh, let's dive into. Uh, you want to? Let's start with uh, "Until My Knuckles Bleed." Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, "Until My Knuckles Bleed" is on Behemoth uh, Publishing. Do you know anything about Behemoth, Greg? Uh, no, I know they're relatively new, and they are doing. Some pretty, not like adult, but like they're like more mature themed comics, more bloodier. Yeah, they have like an action bent to them mm-hmm. a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they did the Turbo Kid comic, 
mm-hmm. they are doing like uh, Watch Dogs, which is that video game. They're doing like an, an RPG. So they do a little bit of that, like, you know, what's that called? Buying proprietary stuff and make it into a comic book. Like licensing? Yeah, there we go. Um, they also, okay, they're from Dallas. They also have a, they print records and tapes. They actually have an artist that's like a, it's like a screamo band. Like an uh, in-house artist? I believe they have an artist on their like comic book uh, consortium of things that they do. I'm going to tell you this right now. I don't hate that. I think every <laughs> comic publisher should have a house band. I kind of love it too. The band, the records they have put out are kind of crazy. Like they've put out like some really cool records. Some, Interesting. Some like weird stuff, but like um, some like really awesome, cool stuff. And they just do a bunch of different shit. They also have Behemoth Interactive, which I never clicked on the link, but that leads me to believe they make like, video games. Video, ga- video games, yeah. So it does appear that they make video games. Anyway, wow. that's Behemoth. They're like, I don't know anything about them besides they have their hand in like everything metal adjacent, I guess, including actually bands on their label. Can 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 we do a, a quick music side? Bar? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I tried to listen to the new Animal Collective, and I think I'm just not an Animal Collective guy. Okay. I wanted to ask you this, and I'm glad that you said this. Which did you read your comic books this week? The Corn album or the Animal Collective album? And for you, it was Corn? It, it's gonna be Corn. I'm if 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 my reading had a soundtrack, it's the corn, the new corn. Hell yeah. Album. Okay, I listened to both albums. I didn't hate them, but I'm Animal Collective, big big fan. Yeah, I, I guess I'm just not. They're not cool. Don't even say you're not cool enough because Animal Collective is like jump the shark, and yeah. they're not. You know what? You know what? Corn and Animal Collective have in common. They have a rabid fan base. They're the only two bands I can name every member. Of, uh, <laughs> that's awesome so uh well, it'd be awesome have, if like corn was moonlighting as animal collective right well when you have band names like panda bear uh deacon and geologist you might think i'm talking about corn but i'm actually naming animal collective that's animal collective <laughs> <laughs> uh so yeah makes makes it easy anyway yeah my reading was mostly done animal collective I was a fan, but, uh, you know, not for everybody, not everybody's cup of tea until my knuckles bleed. Definitely more of a corn album, Mm -hmm. uh, book specifically because it is nineties superheroes, um, who are in present day trying to just live out their life. And it has a bit of like a noir bent to it, like kind of like powers esque. Um, but the main thing here is that it's like, it has a Frank Miller at, ish homage because which is that's just victor santos's artwork yeah and then it's but it's like instead of it being a 90 homage which that's the theme of this fucking uh, episode by the way yep um it like thinks about it and realizes like well what would be fun to do with like those characters what if they were like retired superheroes and just like one's like a bouncer uh <laughs> and it actually like works pretty well there's like yeah. a, pr- a pretty good like mystery to it i really so um i kind of dove into victor santos a little bit and was like oh well, i know i've seen that before i've seen that style he did this like web comic that got printed by dark horse called polar that was mm-hmm. a netflix yeah. netflix show in 2019 and mads mickelson plays the like main character of it yeah it's, i'm, it's I'm recalling it a little bit yeah I don't know. It has a 19% on Rotten Tomatoes, which that's not Victor's fault. He just made, he wrote the damn story. He can't yeah. control the splats. It may not even be <laughs> Mad Mickelson's fault. Exactly. Yeah. It's probably just the, you know, it's the world. A shitty movie. <laughs> yeah. It's also probably that. Um, but this, uh, this comic book was like, probably there wasn't a lot of number ones out this week, but like, one that's like very fun delivers and like the artwork's great and like there's nothing like inaccessible about it i will say this first time i read it i was sleepy don't ever read comic books when you're sleepy that's nope. just like it's like driving when you're sleepy you're always going to have a bad experience I, <laughs> you're gonna miss I, the important <laughs> stuff 
exactly. Went back, read it up, read it on some hyped up coffee, and I was like, "This is this is a it's a hit. It's a hit." <laughs> so uh, yeah, until my knuckles bleed, Victor Santos. You know, maybe we got another Netflix deal. It'll crack the twenties on uh, Rotten Tomatoes this time, and so. Well, That's I mean, worth- it's it's kind of treading a well worn trope of retired superheroes trying to find their place in the world. So, like, I mean, I mean, it's it's a successful genre. It's like if crossover wasn't meta. Exactly. Yes. Do you 100%. know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, and it, it, it also the comic book is also like sometimes you feel like you're reading a '90s book, so it's written really smart like that. Like it's like it'll dip in between. <laughs> kind of too heady. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of boobs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, but it was like, it, it was fun. And then the way that like Victor draws these Drox characters is they're like almost like Minecrafty, like they're big blocks. <laughs> they're too blocky, they're like, it's like a life belt thing. <laughs> yeah, they're like, but it makes it fun. So it's like makes the violence like even better. So I don't know. I don't really have complaints with this. I love seeing like, we, my, I wish Mike D was here. He loves seeing tired out old people as comics. That's that's his favorite genre. It's like yeah, that's his that's his bag. Yeah, old old, uh, old man getting his uh, last day. <laughs> so this, it, this was kind of a hard book to find. Oh, you know why that is? It may actually be coming out this week too. I think that they the digital and the print uh, didn't get aligned. So oh, Behem- interesting. Okay, but Behemoth. If they're listening, and I know they are, they might need to say, hey, we do video games, we do tapes, we do VHSs, we do records. We might need to publish our comic <laughs> books on time. Sometimes we get the schedule mixed up. We're sorry, folks. <laughs> Eventually, it'll all be out there. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get to read it one way or another. <laughs> but the comicsology was on time, so. <laughs> That's all that out. matters. Yeah, it worked out for me. All right, what book you got? Gregory. So I read a book that was um, getting some hype because in early, or I guess mid or late 2021, it was teased that a new superhero was being added to DC called the Monkey Prince. And it is based off of Eastern mythology of a prince who is like this monkey prince who comes and, you know, defeats other enemies. And so, so now the same he's, character based on like Wukong and League of Legends. You don't play League of Legends. Uh, kind of, yeah, that and like Goku and like. Oh other, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, somewhere in there. Okay, mm-hmm. continue. Yeah. And, Didn't mean to interrupt you with my ADD brain. No, 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 you're good. That I encourage questions. I get better when questions are asked of me because if I have the answer, I look smart, and that's the important thing. It is the it's the only important thing. <laughs> so Monkey Prince on DC, written by. Uh, Jean Lu Yang, who did American Born Chinese and Boxer and Saints, two books that I love. They're fantastic. It's all about uh, being like like American Born Chinese is obviously about a Chinese born uh, American born Chinese person living in America and dealing with two different conflicting uh, lives of, of uh, living in America. If that makes sense, I think it was just optioned. Too? Yeah, it's going to be on yeah. Disney Plus, actually. Okay, nice. So that'll be cool. Um, and then the art was done by Bernard Chang, who's done a lot of DC work. So two people who have done uh, some great comics and have found a new home on DC. Uh, it's a, your typical kid in high school has these two parents who like uh, Moonlight as henchmen for DC villains, like building machinery and stuff for different dc villains and so um it wouldn't be a dc book without batman so batman is actually in this book which oh thank god is kind of the downfall of this book um it 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 kind of speaks to dc not uh trusting its reader to be smart enough to know that they're reading a dc book if batman isn't in it and so this kid who turns into the monkey prince um is in the same high school as uh, Batman's son, um, Damien. So oh. that's how we kind of get the connection there. So he's, is he flashing a little fur? By the end, he's flashing some fur. Yeah, he, uh, he's uh, kind of picked on a lot as a kid and this like friendly janitor 
befriends him and like kind of teaches him to be more confident. And then he has to, you know, stand up for himself. And eventually he he's like, has I got to dive. a red ass. <laughs> he has to dive through the school pool and it takes him to this other dimension or other land where his real father, the, the monkey King lives. And so that's where we're left at the end of the episode where he's confronted by Batman because uh, he's in full fur in the high school, kind of beating up the bullies who have beaten him up. And Batman chops off his head with a batarang. Whoa. Yeah. So I don't know if it's like a lizard thing where you can pull a lizard's tail off and the <laughs> tail will grow back. It's a, is, this a, is this a one-off? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a one and done. The monkey <laughs> prince is dead. Okay, that would be kind of badass. It would be kind of badass. Um, this book was um really messy. It was messy as far as a writing, um, as the writing goes. I loved American Born Chinese and Boxer and Saints, but with that, Gene Yang was like allowed to do his own thing and tell his own story. And when you have these amazing writers thrown into marvel and dc continuity you they're really shackled down with what they can do and explore and so um this book is really kind of ham-fisted with like a lot of details really quick and like characters thrown in that you're supposed to care about and you don't really care about at all and so it was just really kind of uh, a jumble and um it wasn't really a good flow as far as telling the story the artwork was beautiful um I- i'm sure it's going to be a promising book as it goes on but you know as far as the first issue i was you know kind of left scratching my head of what the actual hell was going on that's a shame it is a damn shame if if dc wanted to make some money they should have put this character in somewhere else before it appeared here well they did kind they did like um do you remember the uh book the annual they did of like all the um asian characters yeah yeah, yeah. oh he, okay that's where he made the, his debut okay in that book and there so yeah and so another great thing about the monkey prince um number one that came out is the the creative team is all asian pacific descent. i saw that yeah so i mean it's just always great to have representation in there and to always have, you know, the correct voice with the correct character to really, you know, power home a great story. So I have high hopes for this book. So you're saying just a rough things, stumble. Things I like mm-hmm. Asian team, monkey people cutting mm-hmm. off heads. Yep. Things not so great. No real story. Not as of yet. Okay. It's, um, you know, they, I think they tried to run when they should have walked with the first couple issues they really wanted to get to monkey land so they're just like we gotta we gotta go 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 that's why they should have started a monkey land i guess they couldn't have teased that there was a teen story no no so i mean i don't know where they could i mean they could have just sloped the fact that you find out in the first few pages that his parents are like moonlighting as like henchmen to like make tech for villains is like that's your first story arc right that that build up's cool so why they spilled that so quickly is kind of crazy to me. It's all in. You just know you know what your character is. <laughs> I'll cast no breaks at DC. <laughs> Fuck it. Just go. Just throw it in. Put the runs in. We just need <laughs> covers. Just go, 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 go. We'll figure out the story later. We're not making Diamond's uh, top list. <laughs> why aren't we making their top list? Put oh, us shit. in the list. I forgot. <laughs> um, cool. All right. Monkey Prince. Until my knuckles bleed, until my knuckles bleed gets the certified uh, pick of the week. Yeah, I would. I would definitely give it to until my knuckles bleed is getting okay. me pick of the week. Nice. I uh, wanted to shout out to at the end of this episode. What's the furthest place from here or home? Mm-hmm. Um, that comic book that we covered a long time ago, issue number four, come will come out when this is out there. Um, so yeah. What the, what's the furthest place from here has been a solid book all the way through. And I think it's got enough hype that I just don't want to be not on the hype train saying like, this book was good. This book right. is awesome. I want right. to be on the record as long as it doesn't get canceled, <laughs> I guess. Uh, there should be no the- doubt here that First Issue Club is pro furthest thing from here. <laughs> I just want, I, a lot of people are saying First Issue Club, 
they talk about first issues do they even know about comic books outside of that and what's going on just not often <laughs> just number one flying just number ones and then boop, nothing else yep nothing in the brain uh here's an image book you know better than ice cream man at this point and i think what sets it apart is the genuine love for music that the creative team has uh you get like the cool little easter eggs of albums and lyrics in the actual issue and then you get like these little 45s with like the special edition comics which are phenomenal yeah which are mostly sold out you have to kind of pre-order them yeah well now they're on second printings for all second of pressings of the records which is kind of unheard of in the comic industry they're reprinting records with new cover sleeves and everything which is borderline genius as far as marketing goes oh i love it and they're reprinting records too so yeah it's just so so brilliant and, and about every one of these al albums has like one band where i'm like i'm a legitimate fan of that band oh so. when i saw that they had gotten screaming females on there i lost my goddamn mind oh, i was totally. like this dude knows music so well it's so number four has chubby in the gang and it's just yeah. is like there's so many i think we said this already but number one had no joyce manor so it's like just so much rad stuff. I love that they're just going all out on this comic and it's worth it. It's kind of, it's like weird and does like weird shit. And like, you're kind of finding out about the world as it unfolds. What right. That? And that's kind of the great about the indie comic itself is this like you, you go to the indie comics because you want weird stories and weird characters and you just want something different than superheroes punching each other. What Matthew Rosenberg has done is just like, okay, you like these weird stories. How about these weird musicians that go along with it? And so he's kind of like creating this whole community of just like, I love this band. If you love this comic, you're definitely going to love this band. And so like, he's just getting these new readers to listen to this new music, which is just really needed uh, in my eyes because it's just a lot of homogenized music out there right now. So. Oh, and I love, I love that it's like also new music. So it's not just like a lot of comic books when they write stuff, they'll be like... Oh, uh, you know, when music was the best. Do you like I, the Ramones? <laughs> <laughs> they don't make them like they used to. <laughs> uh, Butch Creek Bop changed the world. <laughs> you ever heard of the Beatles? <laughs> <laughs> um, but well, the, you're yeah. right, though. Like, they just, it's like VH1, greatest right. hits. And you're just like, okay, Yank. Yes, I've heard of The Clash. Like, give me a break. But with these new artists that these books are putting out, it's it's phenomenal i love it i'm sorry and this is the, author, the same author that did uh we can never go home which mm -hmm. and uh, four kids rob a bank or something yeah which was when black mask was actually a good publisher and put out their comic books <laughs> easy easy <laughs> they're a good publisher they just don't print <laughs> books uh and so um but yeah so hot author definitely worth uh checking out yeah. i just want to say we endorse this comic I kind of hope they do like a Spotify playlist at some point. Oh, with all the songs? Uh, yeah, just like, you know, here it is. Listen to it, nerds. Get I kind of hope they don't. So you have to like. Oh, just, no, don't do that. You know, what, what makes it more exclusive, right? Like, because it's, I think it's cool. Music, to have like, music shouldn't be exclusive. It should be inclusive. Okay. Uh this is that whole thing about Spotify where it's like, you think all music should be available at all times for free and that bankrupts artists. Well, here's something else. Don't use Spotify either because Joe Rogan. Oh, oh, there you go. Now that's it. <laughs> that's <laughs> what the Twitter is telling me. And yeah, you got I it. I want to be canceled, please. <laughs> um, I don't know. I like the idea. I would love the idea that if they just existed in vinyl and did make it over the digital world. Okay. Because it you know, but, I can get behind that. I don't want to bankrupt bands. That's exactly what I don't want to do. But I do want to hear it. So for me, just like, you know, I don't own a Tesla because it's too expensive. <laughs> I do want all the music that I couldn't get the pre-orders on to be available so I can hear the songs. What if it's like you order the book and you get a special code to enter a Ooh, Spotify playlist? I like that. And you like can't you share a password. It. You can't. You can't. No, it's, a one, it's a one and done password. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> All right, cool. We did a little segment where we update you on a book we covered. Um, and uh, that's it. You got anything else for this, this certified sewed? 
Uh, yeah, I read about three of the first issues that we're going to talk about over there on the Patreon. Um, if you want to join us in more comic book conversation, but don't like Twitter, and I don't blame you, head on over to the First Issue Club Discord. We already have a ton of people over there that love talking comic books and music and sports and all kinds of stuff. So join us over in the Discord. Um, that link can be found on all of our social medias. Uh, once again, thank you, Boulevard Brewing Company, for sponsoring the show. Uh, March 6th at uh, Cinderblock Brewery, we will be doing the event with Debates on Tap, Who the Hell is This For? Nightmare Junkhead to benefit the Kansas City Hope House. Uh, 250. Yeah. Hopefully 250 thank, more. Thanks to all the people that listen to all 250 episodes. And I know that there's at least a handful of you that have heard all 250. Yeah. Solid thank you to anybody listening at all, though. Yeah. It's great to be making 250 episodes of, an, of a fun-ass podcast. Yeah. It is. It's I, I'm, you know, kind of gobsmacked by it all, but it's really fun. It is good. All right. Bye. First Issue Club is brought to you by Boulevard Brewing Company via Space Camper Cosmic IPA. Our music is courtesy of the fine folks at Primary Color Music. You can find, friend, and follow us on social media at First Issue Club or firstissueclub.com. You can support First Issue Club by joining us on our Patreon for additional content at patreon.com slash firstissueclub. <laughs>